So, Optigan video number four. A bit more work has been done. You can see we've got the scope out. Um, on the preamp board, three op amp chips have been changed for brand new 1558s. There's also an additional one down on the power amp board down there that's been changed. Um, the fault has been located. The issue was this first preamp chip on the, um, the op amp chip, sorry, on the preamp board. On its second output, its second output comes from the keyboard, and uh, the second output was kicking out 13 volts DC uh, and no signal. That DC chain has gone through every other op amp, through the op amp on the power amp board, straight into the second channel of the power amp, and that is what made it go up in smoke. Basically, I've seen similar things in uh, guitar amps using much the same kind of um, architecture really um, I wish I'd have checked with the scope much sooner the outputs on the op amp chips but it's all a learning process and this is all something that I will learn for future repairs I checked it on the scope and as I have it hooked up now it's tracing the output from the first op amp chip at the rhythm side and if I can grab this rubber handled set of pliers because if I touch it with my fingers um, it causes ground loop. So if I touch the first rhythm button there you can see it's picking up the drum beat and if I touch some of the chord patterns you can see uh, it's picking up the wave there. Just to put the pedal down to show you that's from the rhythm side that's from the rhythm side there. Um, what's really weird since I've done the op amps on the preamp board the power amp hasn't been fixed yet, so we're only on one speaker, one channel, on the on the whole thing. Um, if I put the pedal down, turn the reverb up, then turn the balance control to the right, we've got this weird bleed. I don't know if you can hear that, but if I vary the speed, Sounds like something out of a horror movie. <laughs> That's the strangest thing. Now I'm not sure, because the second channel was never working, I've never heard it do that before, so it sounds like something is bleeding. I've actually had to completely reverse engineer the preamp board to see what connects to where. I'll pull my notepad up in a second to show that. Um, the keyboard is working but I think it will go pretty much exclusively through the second channel because if I can get over my shoelaces here and put this down with the reverb up, if I press the whole keyboard you can actually hear it cutting the sound and bleeding through a little bit It may be hard to tell on camera, but I, I can definitely hear it. This is with the scope connected to the keyboard channel. And we can see this constant signal here. And I'm not pressing anything, there's no, there's no keys down. But we've got this constant output from the, um, the first up amp there. Which must be, with the reverb and balance row, must be what's causing the sound of the undead. <laughs> um, good thing to note is that now we haven't got any uh, DC across the pots, um, all the scratchiness has gone. Um, that's usually a sign of uh, DC voltage across pots if after they've been cleaned they still, they still scratch. Um, so we don't seem to have any DC problem anymore. I spotted the DC problem because the scope flatlined uh, when I tried the second channel originally but the whole trace rose up to about 13 volts and I metered it out there was a DC voltage so that's what caused unfortunately uh, the damage to the power amp but that's really odd um, this just this strange leakage um, I don't really know where to go from, from here right now on that um, I've got a feeling that when I put in the second channel uh, of the power amp if that is coming through that channel that's just going to come blaring out the speaker so I'm not sure from here on um, I think there's still a little bit more work to do um, probably check the 
resistor packs, um, the couplets as they call them here, sills as we call them now, um, to check those perhaps and see uh, see if it's not dropping down properly. If I disconnect uh, the ground here, it, <laughs> it sounds even crazier. Just tried reversing the connections on this, and it's exactly the same. Which is really weird. If I disconnect both, of course I get nothing through the channel at all. So uh, I have tried that. I'm now wondering if um, the resistor packs that are on the board, when the keys are open, they should pull each channel down to uh, to the ground, and. It can't be pulled down to ground somewhere if it's just the whole keyboard is just bleeding through. Um, so I'm probably going to have to pull this board off again and uh, check the resistor packs in there to see see what's going on there. I can't see any physical damage to them or anything like that, but uh, it's a little bit odd that the, the keyboard is just leaking but not actually not even opening uh, when the keys are pressed. Something is definitely changing when all the keys are pressed. I can hear it. So, um, and then of course the power amp, uh, which I think will be at this stage for a separate video. So, a uh, bit of a mystery, but we've made progress. So more to come.